Hey guys, um, I just want to go over some things, and I want to say first of all that you know I didn't you know ever start this ministry on YouTube or any of it to you know to please man, <laughs> you know exactly, uh, and and I think you can see that I mean for me by changing so, something you know so drastic kind of with the rapture and you know I've always just wanted to try to teach the truth and that's how I see it now and you know that people get upset when people change their views on the rapture and stuff and I have before too but usually you know people go from pre-trib to post-trib or whatever else but no I haven't really came across people who have you know taught what I'm teaching that you know the rapture passage is speaking of the resurrection you know that happens at the moment of death and that the coming of the Lord, you know, happens at the moment of death. But there are other people who believe that. I've showed that on the Preterist Archive. So, you know, it kind of sucks. There's people that's watched my videos since the beginning and stuff and followed me. And I've been teaching, you know, the rapture for over a year, kind of. In and out, I don't know if I've focused on it a lot, but I mean, I have made videos when I first started. I was talking about the rapture and revelation, you know, is the rapture and revelation. And, uh, you know, there's some things that I'm going to have to delete that I, I've already, you know, deleted a lot. But there's I'm going to have to go over things and see when I taught specifically on the rapture or the end times. And, um, and some people who have followed me, you know, or, you know, watched the video since the beginning, I guess I should say. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> well, you might wonder, well, you know, I seemed confident about what I was teaching before and stuff, so, like, how do I know that I'm not wrong now or whatever? Well, I just want to say that I'm more confident now in what I believe now than I was before. And I've always had my questions. Um, and I mean, I still have questions. I still have things i got to figure it out, but um, I think there's probably less of them. And, like, some of the things... One of the things is, like, pre-millennials as a whole, whether it's post-trib or mid-trib, you know, or pre-trib, um, usually a lot of them teach that uh, there's a bodily, there's a physical bodily resurrection in the future sometime before the millennial kingdom, and uh, which I really don't believe that there's a future bodily resurrection. I think the Bible teaches pretty clearly, actually, that there's a spiritual, that, you know, we're sown, sown in a physical body and raised in a spiritual body. Okay, so there's a spiritual body and that is received, you know, at the resurrection after death. Okay, instantly in the twinkling of an eye, we're changed into a physical body, okay, and raised with Christ, to be with Christ. Um, but so they teach that there's this future physical bodily resurrection. They'll teach that there's a future bodily resur physical body bodily re resurrection of the body of Christ specifically. Okay, and then they'll say, well, the body of Christ gets their bodies first to enter in the millennial reign or something, and then after the millenn millennial reign or something like that, the Old Testament saints get their physical bodily their physical body resurrection. And, you know, that never made sense to me. And I tried to find verses and find ways to where I could make sense of this, to where, like, they wouldn't get their, their body all, all at the same time, and it, and it doesn't. It's just nonsense. And that's because the physical bodily resurrection is a nonsense doctrine, period, to begin with. And so, you know, that, that can't be reconciled. You know, and I remember talking to a preacher before who was talking about the physical body, body resurrection, and I was like, what about people who are cremated or whatever? And he's like, well, what about people in the grave? Uh, you know, over thousands of years, they're pretty much dust too. And he's like, I believe, you know, if God said it or whatever, God can do it. He can just bring them, you know, from dust to back to their physical body or whatever. That doesn't even really make any sense, though. You know, why do we need a resurrection of our physical body? And there's a lot of confusion, I think, how... You know, we're raised like Christ, and, and people think that Christ was raised in his physical body, okay? Because one, his body was, like, missing from the tomb, and then two, like, his body had the same characteristics, you know, I guess, uh, what it had, like, the hole in his hands that are in his side still that Thomas put his finger in and stuff. 
But then we see other things like where the disciples like didn't even recognize Jesus or whatever he had to like open their understanding. And then, you know, there's a controversial passage like that could have said that he walked through a door, uh, you know, which he probably did. And so he's doing things with his body that obviously wasn't his physical body. So I think there's some things that we don't really understand there, but uh, I think that's focusing on the wrong thing, really, because, uh, you know, Paul says that we have a spiritual body. Okay, so we're not going to get raised in our, our physical bodies. They're not going to be, you know, raised and transformed. I mean, when they're done, they're done. And they will turn to dust. But we will have a new spiritual body. And so, see, these things never really made sense to me from the premillennial view when I was trying to make sense of these things and work these things out. And then later on, I found out how the loss of rewards doctrine is fake. And usually people who teach the rapture, even pre-trib, mid-trib, and, and even post-trib probably, that uh, when the body of Christ gets raptured, they go to a special judgment that's only for the body of Christ. It's called the, the Day of Christ. And or it's called the judgment seat of Christ. It happens on the day of Christ, they say. And you know, Christians are judged by their works, and they can lose rewards or whatever. So there's basically sorrow in heaven, and that's all a bunch of nonsense. And I still need to do a good good studies on that. But the, I mean, there are passages that might talk about losing rewards. It seems like losing rewards, but really they're like apostasy passages because. If you lose your reward, it's like, you know, you're going to hell, okay? Uh, because the rewards are figurative, you know, and the rewards are basically, it's eternal life. It is heaven itself, you know, the crown of life, the crown of glory. Those are for all saints, okay? That's heaven. And it's not because of our work, it's because of what Christ has done for us, okay? So... This whole idea of loss of rewards, earning rewards by our own works and stuff, it's all a perversion, and it's really bad, actually, okay? So so that whole, the, the, the premillennial interpretation of the day of Christ and the judgment seat of Christ, that's all twisted and everything, and that's all wrong, okay? So that was like a big pillar for me that got knocked out of this, this premillennial banking, um... Now, you know, I, I'm still, I'm, I'm not really sure, sure where to stand on the millennium and stuff. And someone asked me, you know, why have I made these comments? Like, I'm, I'm still not sure about things. Then why am I teaching anything? Okay, well, first of all, I'm sure about the rapture passages. Corinthians and Thessalonians. I said that's the resurrection after death. You know, when Christ comes, that's the moment of death. And... So I'm confident about those things. I'm just saying I still don't know about Revelation, Daniel's 70th week, and the millennium and stuff. I haven't really came out with videos on that. So I'm not really trying to teach anything on that yet. I'm probably not going to be a premillennialist anymore, but I don't know. Because I think that the book of Revelation is way more symbolic. Way, way, way more symbolic than we want to think. And, you know, people say that... Uh, the thousand year reign could a thousand years could really mean like eternity, um, but then there's a problem with Satan being binded for a thousand years and then being loose later. And so I know there's these problems, and so I don't know how that all works out yet. But I do think that Revelation is way more symbolic than we think. And I was thinking about the mark of the beast too, how everybody's like certain it's like a, a microchip, and there's always this like when's the Antichrist coming, when's the mark of the beast coming and stuff. And uh, it could, I don't know, but maybe way too many people are way too certain about what they think it represents. And, you know, and, and I've heard too that the mark of the beast is 666, you know, and a lot of people say it's 666, and they don't even say it's 666. Well, you know, which one is it? And it talks about a mark in the hand and a mark in the forehead. There's also a, a verse, I think, that talks about God's mark in the, saint, in the foreheads of the saints. So are these literal marks? You know, are they microchips? The Bible doesn't say that they're microchips. I mean, they could be. But, I mean, there's a whole lot of people that are certain that that's what it is. And I think you're completely ignoring, like, um, that this is very symbolic, very figurative language. And there could be a lot of different interpretations of it, and everything has to be carefully considered. But 
I am more sure about the rapture passages that saying that you know the rapture isn't true in those passages. That's not what it's talking about. And uh, I've had my questions about this in the past already, but I had I didn't see anyone else who taught that it was death. And I've thought about it being the moment of death before, especially at the end of Matthew 24 when Jesus says, you know, you don't know what hour your Lord comes, you know, be ready. And there's another parable where Jesus says, you know, like, tonight your soul is required of you. And that made me think, you know, that's like the moment of death and the Lord can come at any time. And I've been putting stuff together on this Bible study section of my forum, kjvforum.com on uh, lots of different things. And I'm trying to work out these things. Second Pe Peter 3.10, where it talks about the day of the Lord, and heaven and earth passing away and stuff, the elements melting with fervent heat, and I kind of, fervent heat, and I kind of said what I kind of believe about that. And then there's the bodily resurrection. I'm taking all the verses that people will use to teach that, to show that it's not true. Um, and let's see. The coming of Christ, 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 Thessalonians, no one knows the time, the kingdom of God. I'm not sure if I said this in a video yet, but I'll go to the supposed rapture passages where it talks about the Lord's coming. And I think there's a good verse. Yeah, I might have already said this, I don't know. But John 14, the Lord said, And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that is a coming of the Lord. And uh, I, I believe this to be at the moment of death. Okay, people tried to apply that to the rapture too. I have before because I read that w that way. But this whole idea of the rapture is false. And you know, I, I don't like having to go over, you know, swallow a pill. That's I've been wrong for a long time. But uh, there is a lot to these things, and there's a lot of false teaching out there that people can get snared in. That I got snared in. But as I start to learn more figures of speech and more context, it is going over things over and over again. And we should question, you know, our own beliefs in the Bible and, and go back over them and and see if these things are true or not. That's what the Bereans did, right? <laughs> um, to see if the things that Paul was saying was true, I guess. Um, anyways... There's probably some other good verses that I came up with. Uh, there's the appearing of Christ, the quick and the dead. The quick and the dead means all people will be judged. When Christ shall appear, then shall ye appear in glory with him. Okay, that's kind of like what I just read. What Christ said, you know, I will come to you, so where I am, you will be with me. So when he appears, you shall appear with him in glory. Okay? He appears at death. And I think it's kind of interesting, too, like when Stephen died and he saw Jesus. You know, Jesus appeared to him. You know, there's some of the stuff in the end of Matthew 24, where it's like the end of uh, Daniel's 70th week. That passage, and I don't know how to interpret those exactly still, so I still have some issues with those. But I think that they can be uh, thought of differently than they have been, I'm not sure. <sighs> hmm. You know, when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. That's at the moment of death. When Jesus comes, when Jesus appears, you receive the crown of glory. Okay, that's eternal life. That's heaven. It's being with the Lord. You know, I just read in the Colossians, it said, when, when he appears, you'll appear with him in glory. Yeah, and see, like this, beloved, now that we are the sons of God, First John chapter 3, verse 2, and it doth, not, it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, 
for we shall see him as he is. Okay, so is this some future millennial reign or something? Does this mean that saints can die and not know Jesus as he is until thousands of years later? You know, that makes absolutely no sense at all. This is at the moment of death. But we know when he shall appear at death, we shall be like him, raised like him. We'll have eternal glorified spiritual bodies, and we shall see him as he is. Okay? So we can see here very clearly that the appearing of the Lord Jesus is something that happens at death. This has to happen right away. Okay, and it's not some special rapture event where, you know, the living body of Christ gets raptured and then they can see him as he is. Again, so what, are there dead uh, people who are in Christ already? You know, those who are asleep in Jesus and uh, they don't know how Jesus, they don't know, they can't see Jesus as he is, but like tomorrow, if I got raptured, which won't ever happen, uh, then I could automatically see Jesus how he is, but the people before me couldn't, or whatever. It doesn't make any sense at all. Okay, this happens at death. For every individual saint, you, we will see Jesus as he is. When we are raised like him. Okay. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14, that thou keep his commandment without spot, unrebukable, until when? Until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So again, what is this? Some future time and the millennial reign or something like that? Or some future time of the rapture? I mean, what, Timothy could have died, what, thousands of years ago? And uh, he still has to keep the, the commandment without spot, uh, unrebukable, until until whenever the rapture happens? <laughs> no. Okay? Until whenever the Lord appears to him individually, the moment of death. And you should see that this makes perfect sense, and it helps to understand so many passages. And I've said before that eschatology and the views on the rapture and everything is important, and I still agree with that. Unfortunately, I was wrong, and the only thing that I can do is come out and correct it. Okay? It's not like an easy thing to do. I know it upsets a lot of people. And, you know, I just want people to really consider this, too. And I've had people comment me and comment and leave emails and stuff since I came out with the video saying that the rapture isn't true. And they say they watched the video, but um, I'm wrong or whatever. But it sounds like they really didn't watch the video. They really got no understanding out of it, didn't take notes or anything like that. I pretty much went through, like word for word almost in those passages trying to explain the best that I could you know how I see it now and I still want to do plenty more studies hopefully get clearer and clearer and better and better at teaching it but I mean you have to hopefully get some kind of understanding out of that and if you don't believe it or whatever then give me some verses give me a reason why tell me something okay you can't just be like you're wrong you know, because somebody else said so, or whatever, or because I don't want to change my views, because I just want to believe in something that's false, or whatever, okay? <sighs> Second Timothy one ten, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who abolished death, and hath brought life. Okay, that might be when he appeared uh, in the Incarnation, not sure. Okay, Second Timothy 4, 1, I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead. Now, this doesn't mean that he's going to judge people, you know, he's going to rapture them alive or something and judge them or anything. He's going to judge everybody. Okay, everyone who's alive right now is going to be judged in the future. Everyone who is dead has already been judged. Okay, at his appearing in his kingdom. And now, I've understood that this could be a figure of speech that means means his glorious appearing, okay, or his royal appearing, okay? So people can get, get tripped up on this, too. We've got to understand the figures of speech in the Bible. We've really got to try hard to think outside the box and think, how could this be interpreted differently? Um, you know, what's the correct understanding of this? And I said in, in Corinthians, I don't remember the exact verse, but the, the, the verse that's used for the rapture, it says, you know, we shall not all die. We shall not all die. Um, 
it's either that or it was that we shall all not die. No, I think it's we shall not all die. We shall not all die, but we sh or we shall not all sleep. I'm sorry, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all uh, live, basically. I don't remember the exact verse, but I said that it, it needs to be understand that we shall all not sleep, but we shall all be raised, okay? Um, so it means that, you know, all believers in Christ technically will never die, but will be resurrected, basically. And that's a truth that everyone should agree on, really. A lot of the stuff everyone should agree on. We're going to be judged at death, right? But then we have this problem when we come to these verses because everybody's already been indoctrinated in this false rapture doctrine and this false, probably false premillennial doctrine because of a, a wrong view on revelation and, and, and other things. You know, I'm not saying that none, none of that stuff's coming. I don't know. But more than likely, a lot of that is wrong. <laughs> so, but here, the appearing in his kingdom, it's just, it's one idea. It's his glorious appearing, his royal appearing, okay? So, uh, somebody might think, well, he's going to judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, which is the rapture, and then his kingdom, which is the millennial kingdom, or something like that. That would be totally getting a wrong idea out of this this verse. But anyways, I said that thing in Corinthians, where I said it it needs to be understood in this way. And I said, don't get tripped up on the grammar of the King James. And then someone said I was attacking the King James or something. That's complete nonsense. I never said the King James was wrong. I said that we need to understand the language that's in the King James. Okay? I mean, my name on YouTube is It Is Written KJV 1611. Okay? I have, you know, KJV Forum, KJV Chat. I'm all about the KJV. I don't like it when people attack the KJV and say it's wrong. So that's absolutely absurd. Absurd. For me to talk about the grammar or you know how we interpret it i'm not attacking the king james bible second timothy chapter 4 verse 8 henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and not to me only but unto all them also that love his appearing okay that means individually, uh, at that day, there, each person has an individual day, okay? This is not a one-time event where everybody gets raptured or something and, and they all get, you know, a crown of righteousness or whatever for looking towards the rapture. That's false, okay? And basically, you know, those who love his appearing, those are in Christ, those who want to be with the Lord, okay? We get a crown of righteousness. You know, we're clothed in righteousness. This is figurative uh, words. You know, these are symbols. So, Titus 2.13. Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's the blessed hope, is to be with him, the resurrection. Okay, eternal life. That's the blessed hope, not the false rapture. First Peter one seven. The trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Christ. Okay, again, if we're going to understand this as later on, as the rapture event or at the millennial kingdom, it makes absolutely no sense for those saints that died thousands of years ago. Okay. It has to be much more instant, much more sooner than that. And so there there's a, a individual appearing for each saint. Okay. It's when the Christ comes to receive you unto himself if you're saved. <laughs> so I hope you get that. You look at the appearing and there might be some there's some, you know. Um, the the sign appearing of the Son of Man in heaven at Matthew 24. And this could possibly be interpreted the same way, uh, but a little bit harder to explain, but I'm not really sure about that yet, so I have to look at this a little bit more. Um, you know, I've always interpreted that when he gathers together his elect, that he's gathering together Israel into their land uh, for the millennial kingdom, and I could have been wrong about that. 
so I'm not really sure. Um, it could be it could be gathering together the elect over time as each individual saint dies, and it's just like a overall view of uh, you know from the end or something. I'm not sure. Um, and you know. We think that the coming of the Son of the Man in clouds is like a physical, literal Jesus uh, appearing um, to reign for the Millennial Kingdom or whatever. That's, that's, that could be figured too. Um, the clouds of heaven, you know, it could be judgment with power and glory. And all the earth, tribes of the earth shall mourn and they shall see him. So that could be individually each day when... You know, somebody, an unbeliever dies, and uh, they see the Lord, and they're judged by him. But I'm not exactly sure about that, but I'm thinking that's that's how it could be interpreted. So it's, we have to kind of think outside the box here, think, you know, about the language and stuff. So, um, and here's Jesus, uh, I don't know who he's speaking to, speaking to Paul. I should know this, right? I don't know. But Acts twenty six sixteen says, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose. So there is an appearing of Christ, technically, uh, which is not the rapture. Okay? So anytime when somebody sees Jesus, he is appearing to them. Okay? And so, But the main idea of everything that I just went over is that when the, the appearing of Christ, the main appearing of Christ, when a, when a saint gets their crown, or he's saying, you know, remain steadfast, you know, in the faith until the appearing, or whatever. It's this idea of, you know, there's going to be a final day when you meet the Lord. Okay, that's at death. And nobody knows the day or the hour for anybody. Okay. Death always, you know, comes unexpected in a way. There might be people who are sick or something, and the doctor or something might say, well, you've got so many days or something. But basically, you know, at any time, it could happen. Um, and I'll still go over a little bit more. This is going to be kind of a long video, I guess, if anybody's interested in this stuff. I'm just kind of showing you like where I'm at now. Things that I've looked at. I did the appearing. We can look at the resurrection. Let's see. I don't know. You know, they said, therefore in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. For the, in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read which was spoken unto you by God, saying, Okay, well, this is, you know, this would happen at death. The spiritual body is not going to be any more reproducing, okay? <clears throat> no marriage. Which technically, I guess, marriage doesn't have to mean reproducing, but still, there's not going to be either one of them. Um, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, went to the holy city, and appeared to many. Came into the Sadducees. Okay. I basically just put as a word search every time resurrection is mentioned. So sometimes it's used in different ways. But in general, I think when it's speaking of the future resurrection, he's talking about at death. Neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God, being like the children of the resurrection. That's a good verse. I need to copy this and put it with, uh, which I'll actually probably do this now. I'll open this in a new tab. I'm going to put this with the suggest with the supposed rapture passages that Corinthians one that I talked about where it says that we shall not all die but we shall all be raised you know so there are there's a handful of verses that say that that Christians never die basically and so that agrees with this interpretation of what Paul is saying 
Okay, but we don't see anything really speaking of a rapture as is taught. But you see, when we start seeing that in the context here, we see we see this this interpretation being consistent with scripture, then it should be a little more plain to us that this this is correct. Okay, neither can they die any more, for they are equal unto the angels. And Jesus said, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. They can't neither can they die anymore, they shall never die. And so therefore we all shall not sleep, but we shall all be changed. Okay. And I can look at this too. Um let's just look at spiritual and I'll find it in Paul's letters. We'll look at Corinthians. Let's see. Here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Okay? And this is the whole chapter of the passage that's that goes into that. Why did I get out of that? Should have opened there. I have to go back. I might actually add this to the form too. I'm just gonna work on this while I'm making the video maybe. I don't know. But this is an important verse to see here. I wanna look at the passage. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. Okay, it's talking about Adam and the Lord. As is the earthy, such as those that are earthy, and as is the heavenly, such as they that also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And I say this, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And then he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all not sleep, but we shall all be changed. And some people might say, well, he said a mystery too, so this is something they didn't know before, but that doesn't have to be true. Okay, how can we understand the resurrection? That's a mystery to all of us. Okay, simply explained. Boom. But, um, I mean, this passage here should refute any idea of a future bodily, physical bodily resurrection, okay? He basically says, you know, the body is done. And, and you know, and Paul's also like, who shall save me? Like, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall save me from this body of death? Or whatever, you know? We want to be done with this physical body, you know? I want the new body that comes at death, the spiritual body that Paul talks about. Okay. So, I mean, that throws a wrench into most premillennial thinking. Okay. I don't want you to go on what you've known for the years because you've been taught or whatever. I want you to go with what the Bible says and take a look, good look at it and see how you can read this passage and still think that for some reason in the future there's going to be a physical bodily resurrection some some kind of new body that we don't get after death instantly. I mean, it, it doesn't work. And then people might go to Revelation too and stuff, but we have to remember, we have to like not start at Revelation and then interpret everything else because Revelation is so symbolic. We have to be very careful about how we interpret that. I don't want to go over that. There's various views of how Re Revelation works. You know, some people, they have like an idealist approach or historical approach to where uh, like the whole story of Revelation kind of covers like creation and consummation and it's just kind of like the battle of good and evil and how the Lord wins in the end and stuff. I'm not sure if that's it or not, but there there are these different views. Okay, I think they each need to be studied and given the possibility of being true. You know, there's also... Um, the idealist is like that would that'd be like the historical would be like 
from creation to consummation, like covering all of time. Um, but there's also like maybe from the church until the end or something. Um, you know, then there's of course the the extreme preterist view where things have already been fulfilled, and it's like 70 A.D. And I'm not really sure that I really believe that, but again, it should be given at least the possibility. You know, there's there's amillennialism, and there's 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 a lot of different views, and even the main views that there are doesn't mean that any of those are right. Maybe there's something else, some better way to look at things. But it's going to take a while to figure that one out. But we should see that there is no future physical bodily resurrection. When it talks about the resurrection, most times it's what happens at death, being raised in a spiritual body, being with the Lord at his coming, at his appearing, etc., etc. Let's go back to the resurrection. Okay. The children of the resurrection, they can, they die and no more. So that would have to be main, like, instantly when the body dies, the, then is the res resurrection. Okay, here's one. And they shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of damnation. So people could think this is some kind of a one-time event where everybody, believers and unbelievers, are judged at the same time, but that's a wrong view. This would mean over time, individually, those that have done good to the resurrection of life, and over time, individually, those that have done evil to the resurrection of damnation. Okay? And, you know, this is an interesting one, because Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day, speaking of Lazarus. I think that Martha could have been confused and not really understood the resurrection. Uh, it could be possible, maybe not. But I think most of the times when it says last day, and I can even go over that, I think also last day means at the last day of an individual's life. And I think that Jesus kind of corrects her on that, because he says, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Okay, so he's saying, you know, if they're dead, if their physical bodies are dead already, they're already alive if they're in me. Um, let's see. Then there's some resurrection verses that, of course, talk about the resurrection of Christ. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So, those who are asleep in Christ, they have to wait thousands of years later to be in the likeness of his resurrection? Uh, no. Now, if Christ is preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. The physical body. It is raised in incorruption, the spiritual body. Hmm. <laughs> so, 
lively hope. But basically, there should be no reason where we shouldn't understand that most of these are talking about um, the resurrection that happens after death. And, you know, then we get into Revelation 20, the Millennial Kingdom and stuff. But I think that most people have a wrong view on that. And I'm not sure exactly what the right view is now, but that's the thing to find out. <sighs> hmm. I'll go back to Bible study, see if there's anything else. The coming of Christ, the last day. I can look at the last day. Let's see. I put the end of the individual's life for the last day. Um, and then I made this one bold because that's the one when Martha's talking, and I'm not really sure about that one. I think that she is kind of confused. Uh, I don't know. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Does that mean that saints have to wait for thousands and thousands of years to be raised? No. The last day of the individual's life. That's the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, both hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. And again, I could go to Hebrews where it says, it, you know, a man dies once and then the judgment. Okay, and we see that judgment happens right after death. We can also see the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, where the rich man went instantly to hell at death, and Lazarus went to be with Abraham in heaven instantly after death. Okay, so they were already judged. You know, and then people might wonder, is there a future resurrection of the dead, or judgment, like it says in Revelation, where, um, you know, the unbelievers are judged by every deed or whatever, and they're cast into the lake of fire. You know, is the lake of fire something separate than hell or something? It might not be. That might all be the same thing. Okay, they might be judged at the moment of death. And, uh, like I said, it's very figurative, very symbolic in Revelation. So it could be talking about, you know, all over time. It's not one event, it's just, um, you know, or it's kind of like a parable in a way um, to explain things. I don't know. It's probably better not to be taken literally, exactly like it has been by many, but we'll see. So, I mean, I can't really, it's hard for me to, like, show the last day that it happens at death, but it's just, it's it makes sense that way, okay, that they will be raised at death. I probably could string together some things to show that, that that's how it is. That's what I'm working on. That's why I have these pages. So, I don't, I'm not, I haven't, you know, went through and, and best defended these views on each one of these, but that's what I'm working on. I'm just going over them now. In the coming of Christ, but as the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And I think that just means that the unbelievers are going to be unprepared, and they're going to be destroyed. Okay, They're going to be judged at their death. They're not going to be ready for it, and it's going to be too late. Um... <laughs> and they see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And again, that doesn't have to mean that he's physically, literally descending from the heavens in a cloud. Okay, this is figurative, symbolic language. It could just mean that they're going to see Jesus in heaven after they die, and he is, they're going to see and know that he is King of Kings, he is Lord of Lords. 
Okay. Basically, a lot of the, the passages that talk about the coming of Christ, it should be a little bit more obvious, kind of like the appearing of Christ, that this happens at death. And I showed already how Jesus said, I'll go and prepare a place for you, and I will come and receive you unto myself. Hmm. Okay, and there was the coming of Christ, I guess, when he, um, hmm, that's an interesting one, too. I'll have to look at that. Be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. It could happen at any moment. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Again, if this is a future rapture time, if this is the millennial kingdom that comes thousands and thousands of years later, and there's saints that are already dead, you know, why are they being patient for the coming of the Lord? Okay? Um, it's for his coming at death. Be patient to be with him. Hmm. Of course, some of the ones in Second Thessalonians, I still have to understand that better. That's always been kind of a tricky one. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus at his coming? The coming of Jesus Christ with all his saints. Hmm. Well, you know, I think that this video is way too long already. Almost 50 minutes of me just blabbing about things. But this is on the forum what I'm working on. And I just want to say, you know, again, for the people who have watched my videos since the beginning and stuff, this is just how I see it now. And uh, I don't know exactly what triggered that, but I think it was just like a process over time. And I've been kind of waiting uh, to see if I could find other people who believe the same thing or if, if something just clicked more until I could really go with it. I kind of saw it coming ahead of time. And, uh, you know, I just have to come out with the teaching. So I hope that you'll see it's uh, what the Bible teaches is the resurrection at the moment of death. We'll have a spiritual body. Um, you know, and we should still look forward to that moment. You know, John said, you know, even so, come Lord Jesus. Uh, I think that could be just him expressing wanting to be with Christ. Um, so, that's it for now, guys. But there's, there's lots more that I'm working on besides the rapture and eschatology and time stuff anyways. So, and, you know, the thing is that I get into the, the end time stuff and I learn a little bit and find out I was wrong about some and, and I have more questions. I get frustrated and then I want to get away from it for a while. So I do other things. You know, I got studies on Calvinism and the attributes of God and, and lots of other things. Um, just the resurrection of Jesus and just the doctrines of Jesus Christ. And and then somebody comes along and wants to know something, uh, in my opinion, on the end times or something and then I get back into it and then the same stuff happens you know I find out some things I get frustrated and you know I can get stuck on it for a while but I kind of have to pull away from it every now and then or I wouldn't be into anything else but there's so many other important things and I do think that the end time stuff is important though and you know now seeing that the passages that people use to teach the rapture and um, the they they teach the physical bodily resurrection. I see that there's just so much false teaching, even more than I already thought, and so it's really just mind blowing. 
how much messed up doctrine there is. So, thanks guys. And you can always ask me about these things, message me or email me or whatever, or leave comments. But you know, if you really do want to have a discussion about this, then give me some verses. And give me some reasons why this can't be true or why you think that your view is right. You know, you're going to have to give me a little bit if you really want to discuss this. So, thanks for watching. God bless.